A big thank you to Microsoft for providing the Xbox Series X seen in this video. I'm sure this is exactly what they were expecting when they sent it out. All right, we've played the system. We've talked about my impressions on it. We've done an unboxing and I know what you guys have been waiting for. We're finally going to tear down the Xbox Series X today and see what's going on inside of this system because it is quite heavy and based on the, the render and the tear down that they did with some of the press earlier this year, it seems like a lot of thought went into the system when it comes to overall functionality. So yes, I am very excited to tear this uh, system down. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button down below, helps out a lot. And if you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below. So looking around this system, figuring out how it opens up was actually fairly easy. In fact, I know a few people already took the backing off of this system, posted online. It appears we have two screws on the back here. One is under part of the sticker here. And then the other one is under what appears to be almost like a warranty quote unquote sticker down at the bottom here. So we just have to remove both of those and then unscrew what I believe would be Torx screws inside. And I, I've had some questions about what tools I'm using at times. And I actually went ahead and got a new set of Torx head drill bits just for this project to see how they would turn out. It's a company called Owl Tools. I've never used them before but I figure we'll try them out here and I can give you even my impressions on if this is a good torque set to pick up if you're looking to kind of add to your tools for tearing down systems or other things. These Torx sets are becoming more and more necessary overall for working on systems since both companies just seem to really like security Torx bits. Okay, so we have one warranty pad sticker thing off of it. I'm actually just gonna attach it right to the top there so we don't, we don't lose it. And then I have to unscrew right in here, which I might just be able to kind of cut away at the sticker around it. Yep and we can measure up very quickly which one this is. It's probably either a T10 or a T8 as that's usually what they like to use for these systems from Microsoft. Looks like the T8 fits very snug, so we'll go with that one. So with both of those screws out, the back is clipped in. So it does have some extra support other than just those two screws. It does look like it's meant to be open from the bottom first as it has some tabs here. And then the top sort of has this lip right up here. So otherwise though, you can see it is clipped all the way around. It's fairly thick plastic as well. Remember we have those vents at the bottom. And the reason I point that out is because somewhere asking if that's a good spot maybe to clean since we did see like Sony for example have the PlayStation 5 as a spot to kind of vacuum out and looking inside of here right now it might be since we have the heatsink right here and that large space down here it's actually a pretty good spot to try to get at this side of the heatsink where dust would definitely build up. See, one thing I've mentioned with systems when it comes to overheating problems is generally that dust will get caught on the other side of the heatsink, the side you cannot get to most times because it's like completely enclosed inside of the system. They would use a fan shroud or something to try to kind of funnel air through, but that's where it would pile up. Fortunately, it looks like where we have that opening on the bottom, you do have access to this side of the heat sink. Remember the fan is at the top here, so air would be pulled in and up through here. But if you get some compressed air and maybe blast it into here through those holes or take a vacuum to try to pull any of that dust out, it should actually clear a lot of it out. Also, we do appear to have one of those Microsoft Easter eggs for their hardware, where they'll put like a Master Chief riding a Scorpion as an example on the motherboard for the Xbox One X. Here, it looks like they have the Master Chief helmet just as part of the fan. So pretty cool to see that. It's right behind the back, one of the first things you see when you open it. Now with this back off, we can pretty much see everything inside of the system now. At the top, we have our fan. The motherboard is dead center here. Like I said, our heat sink is right here. And then we do have our power supply and disk drive on the other side. So it's all basically laid out. As we saw previously in teardowns earlier this year, people would pick things up and just try to jam it inside of this box. Now, some of the first screws I'm going after are right above where the fan is up here. And they're the most obvious ones. It does look like these two would be holding some of the plastic in around that underneath that fan. And then we have a larger screw here that has kind of rubber around it, which may help to kind of avoid any extra vibration. But I assume when we get some of these screws out, we can start actually taking things out. And sure enough, with just those three screws out, unplugging the fan here, the entire fan appears to come right out. So it doesn't take much 
to get the fan out. And that would of course allow you to clean it if you need to, if a lot of dust does pile up in here or even up here in kind of the vents. Although I guess you can get to it, but sometimes you might get some dust kind of stuck in here. You can pull this entire fan out and clean it. It, it is a large fan. It, it is pretty big, but I do like that it's pretty easy. I mean, it was five screws. We had two for the back here, unclip the back, and then three, and they were all T8 screws. So as long as you have a T8 uh, bit, you should be able to get the fan out in like a couple minutes. Now is where things start to get a bit more interesting. We have this cable here that was attached right in there, ribbon cable that runs down and around. It's marked USB and it appears to run to this module down here that would be for that front USB port and sync button right there. And then at the front, we can see it's, it is marked center chassis. So we do have to get this out and I'm not seeing a ton of screws. So there might not be a lot actually holding this thing in. I do see a screw here around the disc or the optical disc drive as they label it here. And we should also have the power supply to get. They also have like this big piece of like rubber going all the way around it. Once again, to try to cut down on vibration, I assume. And I guess maybe even act as a bit of a support. So just, it looks like I just have a few screws and I am really starting to think that it's only gonna take like seven or eight screws to get this entire thing just out. Okay, so after some minor problem solving at this point, I figured out what you have to do to actually get this part out and seemingly the board itself. Because remember, there's no screws at the top holding this in vertically. So the only place they could have these screws is at the bottom. That's right. They're under the stand. Remember the stand that's supposed to be impossible to remove? You can remove it and it's not that bad. It was, all right, so figuring it out was kind of annoying, but here, I'll show you how you do this. There's a latch down here. And what we do is we have to kind of go in there with some sort of tool and there's a tab that we lift up and it'll allow us to turn this and then remove it. So I have the piece of plastic held up there. This turns just slightly and then it lifts off. That's it. It has this one little stopper here that's keeping the whole thing from turning. So that's literally the only thing holding this on when you're trying to mess with it if you decide to attempt to take this off. And then once you do have this bottom piece off, we can see some screws here, 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 and here. And those are just holding on the plastics and that center piece. This is basically everything just keeping all the rest of the stuff in place that we've seen so far. Okay, with all the screws removed, this piece, which has, it looks like a tab down here, right there will pop out. And then we have this piece that is mostly there as a safeguard just to help hold the SATA and power cable down to the disc drive, which is now free. This also has kind of rubber bumpers in here. That way any vibration from the disc drive itself can be lessened at least as much as possible. You can still hear it when it's on, of course, but we'll go ahead and unplug both of these cables. And once you do that, your disc drive will just lift right out. Really not a lot to say about this Blu-ray disc drive. Here really is, it's slot loading. It reminds me very much of what's in something like the Xbox One X currently. It's just more status quo for these disk drive units. And who knows, maybe next generation, the one after this, we won't even see them anymore. All right, now everything seems to be loose inside of here. So we should be able to just kind of take this out like they did earlier in the year with Digital Foundry and Austin Evans. And that is, I guess, everything else. And that is, wow, that is a massive heatsink. The other pieces left inside would be our power button and our disc eject button, as well as our USB port down here along with that sync button. All of that is modular. So if you accidentally break your USB port on the front here, it is not part of the motherboard and it technically can be changed out. All right, so I guess we'll start by removing this belt is what we'll call it, this rubber piece that goes all the way around here. It latches right there. And we'll just go ahead and put that over here to the side. And we have what appears to be our power supply here, our heat sink on the other side and our two boards right in the middle. So here's something I really like, the power plug itself on the back. Sometimes they'll get loose in different systems depending on how well they screw them in. I did notice that the Xbox Series X is like rock solid. It does not move at all. And that's because the screws are extremely long. They go all the way through and they screw into the other side where it's all metal. So it's it's very stable. It's not gonna get loose on you like if they had screwed it into plastic or something. So that's actually a good idea for Microsoft. So I've been working out the different screws from around the power supply right here, uh, but they went a little further just to make sure it's not going anywhere at all when they move the system around or stand it up vertically or horizontally, any of that. It actually has a lip that goes underneath this piece as well. So I'm gonna have to lift all of this up while I'm at it, but 
Looking at this side, we do have our Wi-Fi along with three screws holding it in. So Microsoft put screws all over the center chassis to hold it together. It, this whole thing kind of reminds me of the Panasonic Q, where when you open the back of that, it was in like this shelf configuration and you had pieces to take out and that was all kind of screwed together from the top. Yeah, I'm getting kind of those Panasonic Q vibes with this system. So with all the screws removed from this guy right here, it lifts up and we can see our power supply plugs in up here and then it also runs down around there as well. So we can go ahead, remove both of those and lift this up. And there we have our power supply. It is a bit more serious than the one that's in like the Xbox One X or any of that. And it looks like they put a lot of thought into how they were gonna route the power around in kind of this more PC tower-like design. It's replaceable completely as we would expect, but it's certainly not the easiest thing to get to right away. So it does look like we have another wireless chip here for networking with antennas sticking out here. And again, if we have it turned in this orientation, it'll be kind of sticking out the side, or if you stand it up, directly at the top here. So we have two different ones. I assume this one would be for the controller, uh, maybe Bluetooth, and then we have one for Wi-Fi here as well, or Bluetooth. So they do have two different antennas there for different things. Pretty cool to see that, but this has to be removed. And then we have even more screws here to get this piece of metal off. We also have our cable that is combining both boards on either side of this aluminum block. So after removing that piece of metal there and carefully unclipping the cable here with this little latch, this board will lift right off of here. And remember, we have two different boards sandwiching a fairly large piece of aluminum right here in the middle. And this board for the most part seems to have the south bridge right here. And it uses this cable to help communicate with the other board. I like the aluminum design, having a big block in the middle because it'll keep these boards from flexing under a ton of heat. That's something Microsoft dealt with quite a bit during that 360 era. And it seems like they've continued to kind of work out how they can make these boards as stable as possible under a ton of heat while it's uh, playing games. So, so far from what I've seen here, this is a good design. So I was trying to figure out how this came off, but there's no screws and it just kind of pops off. That's a pretty, pretty sturdy sound coming from it when you kind of push them together. But I want to be very careful with this cable here because keep in mind we are routing this cable through it and uh, that's going to be kind of annoying I think overall. You know, the more I'm looking at this, the more I'm, I don't think people who repair consoles now, like I'm, I'm happy that I don't do it as much now because now I'm looking at this and I'm like, wow, just to get down to the chip itself. There is like a circus going on here right now to make this happen. This, by the way, is part of the reason why the system is so heavy here. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a solid piece of metal. And here we are, this is the bottom of the board. This looks to be a compartment for the SSD itself. And then over here is where the memory card would go in. And it does look like they're doing what I think they were gonna do, which was cool the memory card up against this aluminum block. So it would work well, of course, to cool it, but yes, it does tell us that that memory card is gonna be running fairly hot when in use. Okay, with the bottom piece removed, which they mostly just kind of bent this around the edge here to kind of clip it down, we can see what looks like the next evolution, the next generation of the X-clamp. Look at that thing. They actually have it set up, and that, wow, that's some solid metal, by the way, with four separate screws around the edges. So I guess, at least for this, they have officially retired that old X-clamp. And I like what I'm seeing here with this design, minus the fact that it's Torx screws, because wh why not, right? But I really like what I'm seeing here with this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the SSD. They do have uh, more kind of thermal padding underneath of there as well. So it's, yes, they're, they're making sure that that SSD does not overheat at all. And so much so that it, some of it actually spilled over into it. Not a big deal. It's not gonna do anything that's gonna harm it any, but it is indeed removable. It is socketed in. It looks like we just have a Torx screw here. This would then lift up. And uh, I mean, it looks like a typical M.2 drive. I don't know if people will be able to pull information off of this or upgrade it or any of that. I'm sure Microsoft has their own proprietary or proprietary partitions and stuff set up like they did with the Xbox One. But it's good to know that if the SSD does fail, it is replaceable, at least at a factory level. You don't have to throw the whole thing out. Just keep in mind how far I had to go to get to this SSD. It is certainly not something I would recommend most people do. So it is still somewhat tension filled with those screws. You can see how much it kind of bent up after I unscrewed it. Looks like they have some plastic guards here just to make sure it doesn't make direct contact with the board or put too much pressure just in the middle here uh, with all of those components. Yes, this is significantly better in terms of build quality 
than those X clamps that we're so used to now. And with no screws left, we should be able to lift this right up. There we go. Flip it over. And there is that beast of a chip that Microsoft worked with AMD so much to create. I mean, this chip is massive. Wow, what an effort to cool it, by the way. Look at this thing. This is the this is the generation now of stupidly large heatsink, like comically large heatsinks. We saw the PlayStation 5 heatsink. We didn't really talk much about this one because we haven't seen it in person like we kind of did with that where they picked it up and everything. This is a big heatsink. This is huge. So that's where part of the weight comes from. It comes from this heatsink, the vapor chamber. And then it also comes from the aluminum block that's kind of holding everything, that everything's sort of screwed to. You know what? I'm looking at this system. I honestly have no idea how Microsoft released this at $500. They're, the quality of parts inside of this system is like outrageous. And for anyone that's wondering, it looks like it is just all copper on the bottom there. So I guess you could technically use liquid metal. I don't know if I'd recommend it though, because so far with my experiences of this system, it hasn't gotten loud at all. I'm gonna drop some MX4 on here because like I went this far, I might as well. But the system hasn't gotten very loud for me and maybe over time it will. But keep, I mean, it's gonna be in like vertical orientation. I, I'm still pretty nervous about liquid metal when I have something vertically and all this. Ugh. But I don't think this system would benefit tremendously from it anyway. It's just, it's designed so well to be able to accept a chip like this and the amount of power going through it and the heat being put out. It's just, I mean, it's Microsoft's best built system I've ever seen. Now here on the outside, we can see thermal pads all the way around so that all of that RAM all the way around the chip will share this same vapor chamber with the chip itself. And uh, yeah, plenty of cooling here. Also on any components down here that would be accepting power or any of that. Also cooled against the aluminum block. Microsoft just basically said, look, we're gonna jam this big chip. We're gonna make it so it, it can accept all of the heat. It's 12 teraflops and we'll encase it in aluminum and a massive vapor chamber if we have to. You know, I also like the split board design because otherwise, if you think about it, the board would have been fairly, wide? I mean, it would have been like a normal sized motherboard. Instead, they took it, split it, and just kind of set it up side by side so that they could shrink the board down slightly. So it's less, there's less width to it overall. And that's pretty cool. It made it so that they could make a mini PC tower, basically. So it didn't have to stick out really far or be really, really high or tall. So I think for what Microsoft was working with, it is a pretty good job. Well, now I'm gonna put MX4 on this. I'm gonna go back through some of the pictures that I've been taking because whenever you take something apart that is fairly expensive, has a lot of screws, you always wanna take pictures as you go through and then group all of your screws. I've done that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this all back together and we'll regroup here with my final thoughts. And ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna do it here for the Xbox Series X teardown. I have to say, I'm pretty impressed overall with what I've seen inside of this system. The quality of the parts inside are very, very high. I think for the most part, Microsoft came up with a good way to split the board while also making sure that they are very, very sturdy inside with that large aluminum block directly in the middle of them. And then that massive vapor chamber heat sink, it's just impressive stuff. And I gotta be honest, I'm a little surprised they managed to get this system out with the amount of power that it has, all of those quality parts at $500. It's very impressive stuff. Also that T8 that I said I would tell you guys about and how it went through, it worked out well. This is uh, this is Owl Tools. They're not sponsoring the video. It's just a random bit set that I found over on Amazon for any of the Torx screws. I'll, I'll leave a link down below if you wanna check it out. But well, from what I can tell, the T8 held up pretty well over or a ton of screws. Initially, when I was first taking this apart, I thought it'd be pretty easy, straightforward. No, this is one of the most complicated systems that Microsoft 
has released so far, so I can't tell you it's a good idea to take this one apart at home. In fact, it's a terrible idea. Don't take this one apart. But it was interesting to take a look inside, so let me know what you guys think about this system down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.